the focus on Kenya is uh, very critical, especially at this time, because Kenya has gotten attention as a financial hub in the region. And there's increased attention on Kenya and also the role that Kenya has played in terms of either furthering illicit financial flows, either in terms of outflows out of the country or inflows into um, the, the country. I think some of the previous, uh, you know, major journalistic investigations like, you know, the Pandora Papers, Panama Papers, Lax Leaks, uh, West Africa Leaks, and so on, have shown that, you know, politicians and society at large, ha ha, you know, have shown us um, just how big the potential impact of collaborative journalism is, uh, together with that critical partnership between civil society organizations uh, and media, because for us as civil society organizations, we are then able to pick up on policy reforms and advocacy. And then similarly through in-depth research that we have done as civil society organizations, I'll take the example of what we've done in Kenya, um, this has played a critical role in terms of furthering media advocacy because media is then able to take up what we're researching, particularly in regard to, to complex financial uh, transactions and, 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 uh, and, and grant corruption, which is often difficult to prove uh, due to its covert nature. At least that's the experience we've had in Kenya, uh, because as we've seen, financial transactions have grown increasingly complex, uh, both at the national and, and, and at the you know, global, global level. Because while tycoons and corrupt officials and criminal networks have been highly organized and coordinated in their attempt to, you know, to profit as well, and also to evade scrutiny, uh, I think that we have been kind of behind, you know, in terms of how they have outpaced us as a civil society and also as, as media uh, in terms of being able to keep up and just expose, you know, what's happening. And that's why it's important that we as media and civil society, you know, start working more collaboratively and, and you know, really avoid working in, in silos because in an increasingly complex world, uh, you know, both global and national financial systems, these strategic alliances between different anti-corruption actors uh, are, are really vital to enable us to meaningfully fight back against grant corruption, both at the national level and also the global level. Journalists have not really been able to use, you know, the access to information uh, provisions, legislative provisions, to be able to get information uh, from, from government. I think even as civil society, we've had to, you know, make attempts uh, through the court to get information on large-scale financial transactions and, and big major uh, projects. So I would say that exposing perpetrators, you know, the professional enablers and loopholes that have facilitated, you know, corruption, the illicit flow of money ha ha has really been difficult in that lack of information. Another critical challenge has been lack of whistleblower protection mechanisms and this also affects journalists because a lot of the corruption cases in Kenya have journalists as the whistleblowers and, and, and also activists and so because of that it becomes very difficult to almost guarantee journalists that when they expose a story on corruption uh, particularly related to large financial you know sensitive information then the, it that they are most likely going to be the target of of people that they have exposed, you know, or people who are benefiting from that particular uh, transaction that has been exposed. And so, one of the great risks of whistleblowing is that you know there will be there will be reprisals. You will be intimidated, you know. Uh, and it's not just you; it, it could also extend to your family you know, and colleagues. And so it became, it becomes quite a risky affair for journalists. And uh, one thing, for instance, that we have tried to do is train and mentor uh, journalists in, uh, working on investigating and reporting financial crimes, you know, matching them with more experienced uh, journalists and, and, and uh, editors, veteran editors, uh, even outside the borders. 
uh, because sometimes you find that maybe in, in some other countries, some other jurisdictions, they may be more experienced in terms of, you know, uh, conducting, you know, media investigations. And we have gone ahead to match some of these journalists with people, journalists, reputable journalists from abroad, just to be able to strengthen uh, their stories. So I think that is very, very critical because it just doesn't enable journalists to be able to mine information, package and document uh, one particular story, but it's, it actually gives them, I would say, call, the, call it even life skills uh, to be able to conduct you know, other investigative stories um, in the future. We, we, we support investigative efforts, not just for the sake of it, not just for making a headline and then forgetting the issue thereafter. You know, it is about using these stories for policy and legislative uh, reforms. And we have done this um, because of some of the stories that we have, some of the stories we have supported have actually ended up even in court just to ensure that we get justice. Um, for people who have been affected and who have been highlighted in, in some of these stories. So, so the advocacy is real, very wholesome, and uh, it, it is that, that is why we pay a lot of attention to investigative uh, journalism because it has a power to influence legislation, a policy, a reforms, and, and, and even better life you know, for people who have been affected uh, by different kinds of uh, uh, corruption. I think generally the last thing is, is just to strengthen collaboration, keep talking to each other in regards to the work that we are doing. Uh, as civil society, we do a lot of research, a lot of research, and it would be good that we are able to share this research uh, from, from the get-go uh, with, with journalists because they, they bring in an interesting perspective in terms of how they're looking at this research and how we can even present it. And I believe some of the things that we lock up in, in books and reports can be well presented and documented uh, through investigative journalism in, in very exciting ways. Sometimes when we write so much, especially around issues on, on public finance management, illicit financial flows, tax justice, you know, we, we, we lose people when we, when we lock them up in reports. But then when we're able to break down that information and share uh, with journalists and then they're able to use their tools and, and presentation, uh, different ways of presentation to present these stories, uh, by, by, especially through investigative journalism, then you find that Kenyans are get, get more interested and are able to understand these issues even better because the media has a certain way in which they're able to break down uh, some of this information which may look very complex. Um, and then in that way, we are able to get more people interested and to understand you know some of the issues that we're trying to expose particularly in regard to 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 to, to public finance uh, management illicit financial flows and and so on